All right. Well, welcome, uh, Mia. We're so glad you could join us today. And um, we'll hopefully a few other students will join, but we're so excited that you came to the Creative by Nature College Life in the Inland Northwest workshop. Uh, we're three reps uh, from the Inland Northwest uh, who would love to introduce ourselves now and uh, tell you a little bit more about our area of the country. So Eli, if you want to kick us off. Yeah. Hi, Mia. It's great to have you here. Uh, my name is Eli Jenkins. I'm an admission counselor with Gonzaga University. Uh, I'm a Gonzaga grad myself. I live up here in Spokane, Washington, um, and I am the admission counselor for Colorado. So it's uh, nice to meet you today, and uh, hopefully we get you some good information. I'm Micah DeMarco. I am um, one of the senior associate directors at Washington State University. I'm a third uh, generation WCU grad. Um, so I live in Pullman and I also am the counselor for Colorado. I'm actually in Denver right now in a hotel room, but in Denver. <laughs> awesome. And I'm Sean Tyson and I work for Whitworth University in Spokane, Washington. Um, it's my seventh year now at Whitworth. Uh, I yeah, love being an admissions counselor. I'm very excited you're here. I have a lot of friends who live in Colorado, so spend a good amount of time down there. But yeah, thanks for being here. And we're going to chat a little bit about uh, where we're at and why we think, you know, life in the Inland Northwest and college life in the Inland Northwest is a lot of fun. Um, for starters, just to give you a little idea of where our universities are, you can see those big stars on the map. Uh, so Gonzaga and Whitworth up in Spokane, Washington, and then uh, about 90 minutes roughly south of us uh, is uh, Micah down there in WSU in Pullman. Um, and there's a few other schools uh, in the area they didn't, weren't able to join us today. Um, but yeah, we really, really love uh, where we're located at. It's uh, definitely a hub for folks who live in you know eastern Washington, northern Idaho, uh, Montana, you know northeast Oregon. I worked at the Apple Store in Spokane for a few years and people would drive from Canada uh, to come to Spokane to do events and, um, you know, even literally get their iPhones fixed at the store. So it's really is this hub uh, for folks and uh, easy access from Denver. Uh, I know that's maybe a bit a ways from where you're at on the Western Slope, but um, we're only a two and a half hour flight from Denver. Um, so pretty quick and easy to get home. And finally, the reason you're here and looking today, Mia, is uh, some great college choices. Uh, we also we love our location, but also think we have really strong um, and diverse opportunities for education uh, in, in the Inland Northwest. <clears throat> A little bit about uh, some demographics and the seasons, which I know is important to some students, uh, but we, uh, as Spokane, kind of metro area, uh, is the second largest city and area in the state of Washington. And so obviously Seattle being the biggest, uh, but you do have that, uh, you can see the downtown uh, of Spokane there, uh, some pictures of the park, um, and we do get four seasons. Uh, Pullman, Michael will talk a little bit more about Pullman, um, is beautiful. That picture in the bottom right there is uh, their campus, and it's only like a 90-minute drive from Spokane, um, so you'll hear about events going on in Spokane, what you can do in Pullman, and you have access uh, to all of that and more in the area. And as you can see, uh, it's 4.5, a four and a half hour drive from Seattle, six hour drive from Portland, um, direct flights available. We have an international airport in the area. I say quote, cause I think it's what, to Canada, but hey, it's international um, and you can get around and uh, it's uh, again, quick access to where you're at. And four season climate. I know when you think <clears throat> Washington state, you might think Seattle and you know rain, gray, um, which is great for a season, but we definitely get all four over here um, in Spokane in the Inland Northwest. So pack your snow boots and uh, pack some swim, swim trunks for uh, hot summers and everything in between. So that's a little bit about us and take it away, Eli. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Um, one thing I think you'll realize about Spokane, uh, Pullman, just the Inland Northwest in general is how accessible it is to the outdoor areas, whether that's something that you want to do with hiking, skiing. Um, Schweitzer Mountain and Silver Mountains are very popular ski resorts for, I mean, folks of all ages and abilities in the surrounding area. Um, within Spokane, there's five ski resorts within 90 miles. So if you do find yourself wanting to go back up into the mountains, um, that's Schweitzer Mountain down on the bottom left. Like what an interesting view, like being on the mountain and then also seeing um, like big open like lake water, which I think is kind of cool. And then um, top right is like the Palouse Falls down um, kind of closer down by Pullman. Uh, but then there's a lot of hiking trails too, um, whether you want to do hiking, like day hikes, backpacking, things along those lines. And then also one of my favorite parts is just the amount of lakes that are in the area. Um, 
I think it's just about every other week I hear about a new lake that I've never heard of, whether it's in Idaho or in eastern Washington. Um, that's just a great, great place to go catch some sun if you're here in the spring or summer um, or go out on the boat and enjoy that too. Okay. Also, lots of uh, entertainment and events. I like to point out college athletics because we're talking college, so it always seems appropriate. But uh, we've got Division One, Two, II, and Three sports. Um, so sports you can watch, sports you can participate in. Uh, we also have a lot of non-collegiate athletics. So you'll notice that all of these uh, listed there are located in Spokane uh, because they are not a college town. They get all the big perks. Uh, so lots of fun games that you can go to. We actually in Pullman have a a lot of students that'll venture over to Spokane just because we are so close to kind of take advantage of some of those games. Um, and then I love a lot of our annual events. Um, so Hoop Fest is, and you guys will have to correct me if I'm wrong, the largest three on three basketball event in the country. Yeah, okay, pretty cool. I've had friends, I grew up in Washington, I've had friends that have always gone over there and played. So that's a huge event. Bloomsday, the Lilac Festival. Um, we have in Pullman, the National Lentil Festival where you can get the largest bowl of chili um, in, the, in the country, in case you were curious. Uh, but there's always something to be doing um, in, in the Inland Northwest. There's always events going on. Um, we'll talk a little bit about shopping. I always like to preface because this is a big question and I'm sure Eli and Sean get this too of like, oh, what is there to do? Where, where can I go shopping? And I always like to point out this, uh, this chart, um, which is that you'll actually spend quite a bit less money on shopping than you might in high school. Um, you will be in college and you will not have nearly as much free flowing cash as you might have before. But for those of you who like to shop or who are, uh, you know, that's something that you enjoy doing, um, Spokane has a lot. You'll see the big list there. Um, and then Pullman is getting a target um, in Moscow, Idaho. And other than that, you'll use the internet. Uh, the three largest imports to Pullman um, via the mail are from Amazon, uh, Victoria's Secret, and um, oh man, the third one, oh, Apple. Um, so those are the three biggest imports into Pullman. So uh, you'll, You'll always have something with the internet. <laughs> You're full of fun facts, Mike. I love that. Um, all right. A little bit about the art, music, and theater scene here um, in <clears throat> the Inland Northwest. And a lot of these are definitely specific to Spokane, but I know there are local artists that will tour. And in fact, I know Micah can highlight some of the larger artists that have come to WSU, uh, which is uh, really fun. But um, yeah, there's art, there's things like the First Friday Art Walks, um, the Northwest Museum of Arts and Culture and Terrain. There's actually that picture in the bottom left is Terrain. It's this really cool art festival um, where um, they kind of open up this big warehouse and there's music and there's art and you can, you know, buy art or just uh, simply, you know, walk around and observe what there is to see at Terrain. So it's a lot of fun. Um, the music scene is fantastic, uh, both local musicians, touring musicians. Um, the park uh, picture in the top left uh, is the Spokane uh, Riverfront Square, and we uh, that actually was just renovated. Um, to there used to be like an ice rink underneath uh, that pavilion, uh, those bright lights, um, but now it's a concert venue. And so I know uh, let's see, like Lewis the Child, and Death Cab for Cutie, and some other <clears throat> pretty great artists have already come through in the first year of concerts and. I haven't gone yet. I'm, I'm sad that I haven't, but I've had friends who've gone to shows down there and say it's a really cool venue. Um, so, um, and then of course, uh, theater opportunities. Uh, there's touring Broadway plays and I put Hamilton up because they recently came, but gosh, Lion King and I think Waitress and a lot of other really uh, popular shows and the symphony. Um, and in fact, we have, we had a student when they were like 20, they earned a horn, a French horn seat on the Spokane symphony. So that was really exciting. Uh, but um, yeah, there's, there's not a loss of art, music and theater opportunities um, up here in Spokane. And then I don't know, Micah, do you want to kind of hit on some artists that have been to campus down in Pullman? I know I saw uh, Macklemore down there, I think a few years ago yeah. before, before he blew up. 
Yeah, I was just putting in the chat that I uh, just saw um, a show at the Spokane Comedy Club and we had so much fun. I'd never been there before and it was so intimate and fun and I had a blast. Um, yeah, right before lockdown happened, um, we had Billie Eilish and Khalid on campus in the same week. Um, Khalid tickets were six, four or six, depending on where you sat and Billie tickets were 30. Um, but we've had Taylor Swift, um, Snoop Dogg, Mac Miller back in the day. Um, yeah, lots of really, really fun big shows. If I can get myself off mute, <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and transition into talking a little bit about our university. So Gonzaga University, um, we are in Spokane, Washington, like we have talked a little bit about. Um, we are a medium-sized university with around 5,000 undergraduate students. Um, we're a Catholic Jesuit university, um, which we'll talk a little, about, a little bit more um, in a few slides. And then we're a liberal arts college too. So you're gonna be dipping your toes in quite a few different um, topics. You can see we're just across the river from downtown. Um, so right in the heart of the city. And if we go to the next slide, thank you. Like I said, about 5,000 undergraduate students, we have a 92% retention rate, which means if you come to Gonzaga in your first year, you're back for your second. Um, that comes from strong university support, but I think that really comes from our students supporting each other as well. Um, three, three quarters of our students will graduate in four years. 91% of our students are um, either employed in the military in graduate school or in a competitive service program like the Peace Corps when graduating. Uh, and then we have an average class size of 23 and an 11 to one student faculty ratio. So I think you'll find that you're definitely an individual in all of your courses. Thank you. Um, in our academic programs, we have a laundry list of majors um, separated into these five schools. So our College of Arts and Sciences is things like humanities, social and natural sciences. Um, if you're interested in anything along the lines of pre-med, pre-law, pre-PA, um, a lot of our students, uh, it doesn't reside in the College of Arts and Sciences, but a lot of our advising teams do um, go through the College of Arts and Sciences. Our accounting program in the School of Business Administration is top 30. Our business administration program is top 100. Uh, we have a variety of ways to become a teacher at Gonzaga. We don't have an elementary or secondary education major, but we have countless students that become elementary and secondary education uh, teachers um, after going to Gonzaga. Our School of Engineering is a direct entry major, so you must list that as your main academic interest when applying on the Common App. Um, computer Science is there as well as, as well as our variety of engineering majors. Nursing is also a uh, direct entry major. Human Physiology is not. Um, so you'll find that, health, that healthcare is the number one industry in Spokane because Spokane is such a hub um, for the Inland Northwest like we've talked about before. We can go ahead to the next slide. Thank you. So an active community, I think community is what you will hear a lot of um, at Gonzaga. Looks like there might've been a little bit of a formatting issue and I think that was definitely on my end here, um, but I think some of these numbers tell a great story. Um, we have 38 different faiths represented on campus. As a Catholic university, we often get asked, are you required to be Catholic? That the answer to that is no. About half of our students are Catholic. Uh, we want you to be the best you possible, whatever that looks like, while also providing support when necessary for our students' religious and spiritual needs. 82% um, of our students come from 200 miles away or further, so you're not alone in coming, uh, you know, far away from home. And Colorado's our fourth biggest state as well. Study abroad's a very um, popular experience, 63% of our students will do it, and we actively work with students and encourage them to do so. Um, over 140 plus clubs and organizations, so you're not going to be bored on campus, and over half of our students will participate in some sort of um, um, intramural. I think the bottom right, top 20 in undergraduate teaching, I think that shows why our professors are here. They're there to teach and be accessible to undergrads, and then we have about almost, we're hoping to get up to two-thirds here soon of our students will intern at some point. And then Spokane, Washington, I know we've talked a little bit about this already, so I'll be brief. We're about 15, 20 minute walk from downtown Spokane. Um, if you do find yourself wanting to use those city resources that we do have. Um, and then I always like to say, it's a great reason to make friends with someone from the Seattle area who brought their car to, to give you a ride around town. Um, we are on the common application. December 1st is our single deadline. We don't have early decision or regular decision, just one deadline, December 1st. Um, Talk to your admission counselor and reach out if you do have any questions about test optional, if you should send your test scores in, we're here to help. And if you're at or below 3.2 GPA, we highly recommend that you schedule an admission interview. 
And then how can you be a Zag? I think when you look at the total cost of Gonzaga as a private university, it's going to raise some eyebrows, uh, but that's likely not the cost you're going to pay. 98% of our students receive some sort of merit scholarship, average financial aid package of $30,000 a year. Um, and we do have application-based scholarships for merit. When you apply to Gonzaga, you are automatically considered for a merit scholarship. So please keep that in mind. Um, and please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions how you can be a Zag. Awesome. Uh, well, I, like I said at the beginning, my name is Micah DeMarco. Uh, I'm a third generation WC graduate. Uh, and if you want to hit my next slide, Sean, um, we've already talked about where we're located, but I'll say it again. Uh, we're in Pullman, Washington, so small college town in eastern Washington. If we go to my next slide, the city of Pullman is about 35,000 folks, I mean, two thirds of them are college students. Uh, some of my favorite fun facts, and yes, I like fun facts. Uh, some of my favorite fun facts are the average age when school is in session in Pullman is 22.1 years old. It is incredibly young. Um, I, I like to point out that I'm 28. So when I'm at the grocery store, I'm kind of elderly. Um, it is a fun place to be. Um, because it's a college town, everyone's new to it. So there are very few people that are from Pullman. And so it really levels the playing field and creates a very strong community uh, feeling when everybody's new to the same place at the same time. Uh, because we're a college town, we're also incredibly safe. Um, we're one of the safest schools in the country, um, and we are the safest in the Pac-12. Um, facts and figures, I won't go over these too much. Um, things I like to point out here are really just that we really are seeing students from all over the country and all over the world from lots of different uh, backgrounds. And so we are well versed at getting you all the resources that you need to be successful at WSU. And that'll be true with every school. So I'm not saying anything new, uh, but good facts to have and our bosses like us to include these. Go to my next slide. Things to do. We talked a lot about things to do, so I won't bore you too much. Um, you can read everything that we have to do up there. Um, some things that we haven't touched on uh, that are you know unique to WSU would be Greek life. Um, we are one of three schools in the country that has an increasing number of students involved in fraternities or sororities. Uh, and so for us, that looks like about one in three of our students will be involved in it. So pretty big. And then we're a Pac-12 school. We won our game yesterday, uh, our football game. So I'm excited about football again, kind of, um, but athletics are big. You can see in this picture here, um, that whole kind of left-hand side is our student section. So it is a pretty large student section. It's fun to be uh, at on game days. We'll talk about academics. Um, 200 fields of study. We're a fairly large school, so we've got all the big ones. Um, we have business communication and engineering as some of our largest standalone majors and then anything within the pre-health sciences as well. We do have our own vet school, med school, nursing school, and pharmacy school. Uh, big things to know about our programs are students apply to WSU and not into a major. So um, nationwide, about two thirds of our students uh, switch majors and that's true at WSU. I like to point out, I switched my major three times. I'm still a functioning member of society for all intents and purposes. Um, then all of our students can do research, study abroad programs, et cetera. A little bit about how to apply. Uh, for those of you who are seniors, our app's open now. Uh, the application has no essays, no letters of recommendation, personal statements. It's your application and your transcripts. Um, I'll say it again, SAT and ACT are not required. You are welcome to send them in, but we will not use them. So I would save your money and buy yourself a Starbucks drink instead, because we do not need those test scores. Um, next slide. When we're looking at your transcripts, we're looking at your core requirements, the strength of your coursework, your grade trends, and then our average unweighted GPA this past year was a 3.46. And again, that's unweighted. That's what the state of Washington uses. So we as a state school in Washington use unweighted. Um, and then assured admission. So those of you with a 3.6 or above unweighted will be automatically admitted. It's a pretty simple process. My next slide, um, we've got an honors college and I won't touch on this too much, but anyone interested in making a, a big school feel a lot smaller might be interested in an honors college, it's typically the top three to 7% of applicants. It makes a, like I said, a large school feel a lot smaller and all the classes are Socratic. So instead of having tests or exams, you would instead prove your knowledge through essays, presentations and discussions. So different style of learning that can give some students quite the advantage. Transferable credits, everybody in Colorado seems to have them, which is awesome. Um, I've never worked with a state that has more students with transfer credits. Those are the websites you can see exactly what the credits transfer over as. Um, and I promise you, most of you probably have them. 
<laughs> Next slide. Um, cost of attendance, we'll talk super briefly about this. The biggest thing I'd like to point out, and we'll talk scholarships, is housing and dining. Um, housing and dining, first year is required on campus, and so it's a bit expensive. After freshman year, costs come down pretty substantially. Um, our part of Eastern Washington is cheap to live in for the most part, and so students can cut those costs of living in about half after freshman year. Um, as far as tuition and ways to get that down, my next slide um, should talk about scholarships for out-of-state students. So we've got, and actually we go one more for me, Sean, I think, there we go. Um, we have the Cougar Award, which is automatically given to students at a 3.0 to a 3.39. And those of you with a 3.4 or above would get the WUI. I assume we're familiar with the WUI, but it's the Western Undergraduate Exchange. It helps lower tuition costs for out-of-state students. Students are automatically considered by, uh, for these as long as they apply by January 31. No, uh, nothing else that needs to be done. No secret handshake or dance move you need to give me to get those awards. You just have to meet the qualifications and apply by January 31. My next slide should just be the dates and deadlines, hopefully. Yeah, January 31 again is the big one. And then May 1's the national confirmation deadline. So uh, students have until then to tell us yes or no. And our turnaround time for applications is about two weeks. So uh, if you're interested in hearing back from a school pretty quickly um, and then getting to kind of sit back, relax, feel good about, hey, look, I got admitted into a college, um, you still have until May. So my contact info is the next slide. If you guys have any, inter, uh, any questions or things I can uh, tell you information wise, uh, please reach out and I'd be happy to help. I'll pass it over. Amazing. Thank you. Um, well, I think this is so great. We definitely have like within what an hour and a half, two hours, three fairly different schools, small, medium, large, state, private. Um, so this is great. Um, and thanks. I know Karis, it looks like we, uh, you joined kind of halfway through. So just wanted to say hello. Thanks for being with us um, and learning about college life in, in the Northwest. Um, but yeah, again, I'm Sean Tyson. I work for Whitworth University. We're small private Christian liberal arts university about gosh, 20 minutes on a good day away from Eli down at Gonzaga and just up the road. Uh, so um, <clears throat> we talk about our mission of mind and heart here at Whitworth, really, of course, wanting to educate students in the classroom. Uh, that's obviously why you spend time and money and effort and energy uh, and maybe some tears at college, uh, but also growing and learning as um, a person and um, who you are uh, as a young adult and growing into adulthood as you leave college going into the world. So making great scholars, but also great citizens. So that well-rounded approach. Um, similar to Eli, but even smaller, uh, we have <laughs> 2,300 students being that smaller private school um, small student faculty ratio, a lot of close contact with your uh, professors, both in the classroom, outside of the classroom. Um, I've had professors who've been small group leaders, premarital counselors, have uh, actually um, been the efficient at weddings for students after they graduate, um, life advice. So it, it goes beyond uh, just those uh, teacher student relationships, which is really cool. Um, and then that bottom one there, post-grad success, uh, again, 95% of our students within nine months are in a job in a graduate school. That chunk is growing, more and more students wanting to get their master's or um, you know, graduate work um, or you know, service, something along those lines. Um, I'm not gonna read this whole thing, um, but I do just wanna uh, point out that bold part in the middle. So my advisor, Dr. Abby in the health sciences department has had a significant impact on me. Um, and you can of course read the whole rest of the quote, but um, that's not uncommon for students to feel really connected to their professors, their advisors, and uh, they feel like they have that uh, relationship that helps them um, significantly throughout their time at Whitworth. A um, little bit about our class profile. The main things I wanna point out, cause you can obviously read the numbers, uh, but are that we do accept that weighted GPA, which as most students in Colorado uh, do have weighted GPAs. If you don't, um, we will <clears throat> you know, weight it uh, once we get your transcript. And then uh, we have super scoring. Um, it's somewhat unique. I don't know how many schools do it, but if you take the SAT or the ACT multiple times, uh, we combine your best sections from those attempts uh, and add those together to be your one super score. Um, we are test optional. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. A lot of majors and programs, so uh, you don't have to memorize this list. Uh, it's on the website. The ones with the BBA, BA, BS are all majors, and the rest are, you know, minors, programs along those lines. Um, yeah, lots to choose from. Some of our most popular being uh, health science, biology, business management, uh, even though we do have other tracks in business as well. 
um, <clears throat> uh, psychology and education kind of round out that top five ish uh, as far as popularity goes. But I was a theology major. It was one of the smaller majors at Whitworth and it was uh, extremely rigorous, uh, very, very great classes, amazing professors. So you can't really go wrong. Um, and we don't have direct entry programs. I know there's been a few of those programs talked about um, on the presentation, um, and, but it's all about finding what's right for you. Some students love that and they want to go straight into a program. Others want the ability to kind of be flexible. Um, so just finding the school that kind of fits with what you're looking for. Um, experiential learning, about 50% of our students study abroad. Um, there's lots of ways to get off campus as uh, both Micah and Eli talked about really supplementing what you learn in the classroom and doing that and getting outside and getting those experiences are super helpful uh, to your processes as you look, what do I want to do with my life, right? That big question and what do I do after graduation? All of these things can kind of help that and help boost your resume uh, along the way. Um, and again, I'm not going to read this whole quote, but Lily had the opportunity to study abroad, do some uh, shadowing of nurses, and that's what she wanted to do. And that kind of helped her realize, okay, yeah, that is what I want to do as I kind of move forward in my career. Um, student life, uh, it's fun living on campus. Uh, I'll keep this brief. We have 10 residence halls. Students are required to live on campus for the first two years, and then some move off, some stay on, but there's a lot going on. Um, intramurals, uh, Ultimate Frisbee is probably the most popular. What was kind of a granola-y, you know, somewhat with the, your Ultimate Frisbee and your Chacos and your Nalgene, you probably see me sipping on that. So definitely Pacific Northwest, Inland Northwest vibes here at Whitworth. Uh, bring your hammock uh, and you'll, you'll fit right in. Um, we're D3, um, and so um, you definitely, if you want the big athletic experience, you got two amazing schools with football and basketball and national recognition. Uh, we're a little bit smaller, but uh, the one thing I will say about Whitworth and our D3 athletics, so we're really competitive uh, for the area. So we've won the Northwest Conference All Sports Trophy 12 years in a row, as you can see. Um, so if you are a student athlete, who maybe isn't gonna go D1, uh, but you still wanna be in an environment where you are competing at a high level pretty consistently in any one of our 21 sports. Um, yeah, you definitely uh, can do that here. Art, music, theater, alive and well. We talked a lot about the opportunities in Spokane and uh, to, you know, to get out and do that, uh, but there's tons of opportunities on campus regardless of major and uh, scholarships available. Um, campus ministry, spiritual life. I want to echo uh, what Eli said about Gonzaga. Uh, we are a Presbyterian university, but we have lots of different um, faith and spirituality represented on campus. Um, you don't have to be a Christian to come to Whitworth, no statements of faith, no required chapel, anything like that. Um, you know, we just want to provide that opportunity for students to explore or deepen faith uh, while they're here on campus. And that happens uh, in a lot of different ways. Spokane, we've talked about it a lot. So I just, uh, mostly I like this picture. Uh, and yeah, like I said, we're more in the residential area about, gosh, 20 minutes uh, north of, of downtown. Applying's free. Um, we're on the Common App, we're on the Whitworth app. You pick, it uh, doesn't matter to us, no preference. Um, and then we need your transcript. Unofficial works great. Uh, we uh, Once we get those two things, that's all we actually need to complete an application. Uh, the writing's optional, test scores are optional, recommendations optional. All those things will help as we decide honors admit or not, though. So students with 375 and above uh, are considered for admission with honors, and then we those any supplemental materials can help. Deadlines, very similar to my colleagues. Uh, first one is coming up on November 15th. Last admissions deadline's March 1st. Uh, we'll tell you within about three weeks of a completed app. Uh, so we do rolling admissions throughout the year. Um, and then May 1 is that national deposit deadline. We'll try to get your financial aid information uh, in the spring starting February 1. We like to give away money, uh, almost $36,000 on average uh, for students and scholarships and grants. Everyone's gonna get financial aid at Whitworth um, and we try to provide a top value here on the West Coast. And then a bunch of scholarships. Uh, we like, uh, to, again, we like to give away money. So uh, that first one, university scholarship is the main one uh, that we give away based on your application uh, to Whitworth. Everyone's gonna get a housing grant because uh, you're required to live on campus. And so we give that to students. Uh, uh, and then if you come visit this year during your senior year, um, then we will give you a thousand dollars visit scholarship one time. There's some other ones listed, but I don't wanna, um, take all of our time talking about what we're scholarship. So uh, that is, I wanna say the end of the presentation. Oh yeah, come hang out. 
Um, but we just want to give an opportunity. I know we have about 10 more minutes. Uh, and we looks like we have one more person join. Perfect. Uh, but feel free to unmute or put in the chat um, any questions you might have for me, or Micah, or Eli about our schools, about the Northwest. Um, we're, that's why we're here. So ask away. If not, we'll sit in awkward silence for a little bit and then we'll say goodbye, which is also okay. Uh, don't feel the pressure, but we want to answer your questions if you have them. While we're, we're talking awkward silence, I, I just had um, Starbucks delivered to my, uh, well, I guess you can't see, there we go, Starbucks delivered to my hotel room. And normally I would I would not drink a coffee on a, on a presentation, but I thought, you know, a, a presentation focused on the Northwest Washington feels very appropriate for Starbucks, so. <laughs> it really does, yes. I broke my cardinal rule, you guys. <laughs> That's great. And it looks like Kathy joined us. Hello, Kathy. Oh, Mia, how's it going? Hi, thank you so much for all the information. Absolutely, thanks for being here. Yeah, no problem. Are there any questions that we can answer for you about um, like the area or the schools that we discuss? Um, I don't think so. I got a lot of info. I'm just a junior, so kind of seeing what's out there yeah. mostly. So yeah. That's great. Well, hopefully next year we get to, you get to meet us all in person, right? Yeah. Kathy, fingers crossed that we'll be back uh, in your beautiful city. Mia, do you live in the Aspen area or are you pretty? Flat? I live in Eagle, Colorado. so like the Vail Valley. Okay. They have an equally beautiful valley as ours. And next year, Mia, for your senior year, you can come and meet these guys in person right in yeah. the tent and you can close the deal by senior year. You're, you're deciding, and I can't tell you what a gorgeous region they represent. I've been to all these colleges, and I sincerely, uh, my daughter was born in the Northwest. She now lives in Seattle, and I'd take the inland region any day. Yeah. So uh, you guys are representing a beautiful, you don't have to sell this area once somebody sets foot on it. And uh, the basketball's not bad at Gonzaga. And we actually had an Aspen player, Mia, play at Whitworth um, and coach at Whitworth. So uh, we feel very connected there. And I've been to a conference at Washington State, so I feel like I've covered this territory well. And uh, you can't go wrong. Thanks, guys, for presenting this. And uh, I just think it's a, a wonderful workshop for people to get to know your region. So... We'll thank see you, you so all much, next Kathy. year. Yeah, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. Thank you. Kathy. Thank you. Of course, thanks, Mia. Um, appreciate you. And then Karis and then College. Not sure who College is, but I love that name. Um, <laughs> yeah, any other questions before we say our goodbyes? Okay, the last thing I'll plug is you can definitely get to all of our schools uh, in a weekend of visits. I know some people even like to, they'll maybe do WSU on one day and then drive up to Spokane and do Gonzaga and Whitworth like in the same day, those really ambitious or make it a long weekend. Um, but um, Micah and Eli, any events that you wanna kind of plug coming up or easiest ways to like, to visit WSU and Gonzaga? And we're offering in-person visits right now. Um, and I think it's always it's always easier for us to say, oh yeah, just come from Colorado to visit. You know, um, if that's un if that's not a possibility, um, I know Gonzaga, I'm sure both of these universities are as well offering a lot of virtual um, visit opportunities. So there's a lot of ways to interact, even if you're not able to make your way up to Spokane and Pullman, at least right now. Yeah, and we'll all say I, I also run our campus visits, so we are definitely doing campus visits right now. Um, we've got a program coming up on the 6th of November, um, and we'll be offering on-site admission for anyone interested in that. And then we also will have visit opportunities in the springtime for admitted students that also give that $1,000 scholarship to come and visit. I, I saw that mentioned on your uh, slideshow, so we'll do the same. Uh, but yeah, definitely can get to all three of our universities in a day if you're ambitious. Yeah, that's great. And I always plug this and I don't know if uh, y'all have a travel reimbursement fund, but we do. And so I always tell students, 
even if you're looking to visit, you know, like Gonzaga, it's like pop on over to Whitworth, we'll reimburse some travel and you can at least check out campus, but that's for admitted seniors. Uh, so I know, um, you know, Mia, you mentioned you're a junior, but I don't know, like Karis or college, uh, if you're seniors and you plan to apply, but if you do that, we'll kind of help uh, cover some of that cost to get up to Spokane. Uh, maybe it's, you know, some hotel money or some flight, uh, you know, whatever rental cars are pricey these days, but either way, um, like Kathy said, I think once you get here, uh, it's a pretty special place, uh, the Inland Northwest, and we love it. I mean, we've all been around it now for quite a while. I mean, me, I moved over here 14 years ago, um, and so Spokane's uh, for sure home now. But yeah, hopefully we'll uh, see on campus. As far as our visit programs, we have like Y Whitworth Days almost every Friday, um, so quite a bit of opportunities there. Multicultural visit program coming up in November. Um, for multi you know BIPOC and first gen students in particular and then our fall preview as well as in a few weeks so yeah amazing well I think that's just about our time uh thank you everyone this has been a lot of fun um and enjoy the rest of the fair if, unless there are any questions uh we will say our goodbyes can I just say I love seeing that we're all 509 phone numbers yes it's great <laughs> 509 in the building I was like, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, enjoy the rest of the fair, and we will hopefully see you later. All right. How did it go?